Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to make a procedural stained glass. Uh, in terms of stained glass, this essentially can be done by hand. That's why I hope you, having watched the demonstration, which shows you the proceduralness of this stained glass. There are at least two ways to achieve this glass, one with super chalk and the other with animation nodes. Of course, you can combine both nodes together for the work. Uh, as has been shown in the demonstration, which turns to be the third way to make this glass. But uh, anyway, by the end, I, I think there will be millions ways to do that. But uh, today's topic is really about procedural modeling using super chalk. I think I will present the method using animation node as well sometime, um, because there are some pros and cons in either methods, but it will take some time to explore how to make uh, anim animation node methods um, more interesting. In general, I will say that if you want to like to achieve kind of proceduralness in current demonstration, uh, super chalk should be the way to go because it takes less nodes. Uh, if there is any update in the future, you can look at the description. But uh, by the time this is what I'm going to present to you. Anyway, so let's make a plane MK2 and you can change the vertex numbers uh, as you wish. You can make it a center. Next step is I want a viewer B mesh because I want to see what I'm working with. Next thing is mesh filter. And uh, one issue work with super chalk is it breaks down mesh into vertices, edge, and polygons. Uh, so mesh filter, now I'm simply generate a mask. Uh, and I will keep the filter type interior. So the whole point is I want to only transform the interior vertices while keep the uh, the frame of this window intact, still as a square. Next step is uh, transform select. So I'm going to put this mask into mask, put the original vertices into vertices. So the whole point is if I'm activating this matrix and turn on these locations, I'm moving the vertices, which the only the interior vertices. But I want to all these vertices moving randomly. So there are several ways to do. Uh, one way is to simply use random vector. But actually, this is not simple. The issue of uh, random vector is you're using a single scale to control all x, y, and z. But I don't want you to move on z. So there are multiple ways to solve this issue, but uh, in this particular case, I think I'm going to use another method. It's called a randomized input vertices. So if I put the vertices into that, and it will generate error. And now this, this comes to be a tricky part. If I put these vertices into the vertices, everything will be exploded, okay? Because, um, in this series of metrics, I'm, I'm changing everything based on the original vertices. But if I'm using this randomized input vertices, I'm also randomized everything based on the input vertices. So this causes an addition of vertices on itself. That's why it exploded. Um, in this case, to solve that, I'm going to generate another plane but this time I'm going to change the steps into zero. So I'm only going to generate the vertices, but the without generating any distance. So now everything looks fine. And if I just change X and Y, then it works. And to synchronize all these values, I'm going to simply make a number. X, Y, X, Y. And basically, this is the whole point. And uh, if now we can take the polygons to the faces, then a plane has been generated. So now this looks like a plane, but if you go to the Y frame, go to edit the mode to show the Y frame, you can see how the vertices has been looked. And we're going to generate the wireframe. Uh, so take the wireframe. And then we can increase the thickness. 
So now we lost the original plane, but if you just turn the replace original off, so we'll keep the glasses, but also keep the wireframe. And then we can generate materials one and material two. Like take it as a wireframe glass. And to make the different glasses, different color, there are multiple methods. Uh, I personally will use the vertex color method. So vertex color MK3. Set the type into faces. Then we're going to generate color. We're going to use a color input. And then I'm going to define the color. So if I turn the use alpha, the arrow will disappear. If I turn off the alpha, there will be an arrow. I never understand the why is that exactly, uh, but this is how it works. So I cannot really fix anything. So to generate random color components, just to use a random number generator. Make the float and the highest number will be one. Plug that in. The issue is about the size. This sounds to be a tr very tricky part. So um, I think the size will be the amount of polygons. Anyway, let's just uh, take a uh, uh, list length. Take the polygons into the data. And then we're going to just uh, simply going to duplicate it. Change the seeds. Duplicate that. Change the seeds and then plug in HSL. So now we have a vertex color being generated. And then, then let's go to the material. Let's go to our shader. The original glass, let's just uh, the vertex color. So now we have different colors. And if we go to the socket 2, just to make the color down. And let's go to the modifier, turn the material index to 1. So it will go to socket 2. Because the index always goes from 0. So now basically that's it. If you increase the thickness, then this is it. A procedural stained glass. You can easily change the color by changing the seed and so on. And you can also change the values of X, Y, Z, and also the amount of the whole thing. You can also change the range of these colors so that it makes saturation higher or so. So many different ways to play with that. And if you would like to make it a circular or whatever other things, you simply just make a boolean. So let's just add a cylinders. And let's add a boolean. And let's make change the type to intersect. And basically that's it. And you can put the wireframes um, below so that the wireframe also has been generated on the edge. If you're not satisfied with there's some parts that like the edge is not very clean, then usually it can be solved like add by uh, by adding the subdivision services. Yeah, so now it has been uh, not subdivision but a solidifier. So increase the thickness then it will generate more clean wireframe on the edge and so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.